Why do we use Turkish coffee pots from copper? Could we achieve a good result by using stainless steel pot? Today we're going to find out. But first, brief history. Why copper? First of all, it's because of faster heating and faster cooling. Copper was used by humans since around 11,000 years ago. It was actually the first metal humans learned to use. And as the legends say, Turkish coffee can be traced back to 16th century, which is not far ago. It was allegedly brought by Yemenite traders to Turkey. And of course, Greeks will not agree with this. But if you look at the map, it was easier to go to Turkey by land, and Greece was farther. It could possibly originate in Arabian Peninsula and go to Turkey and in other countries. And back to the copper. It's a great material, but it's not neutral. It will oxidize with time and potentially can affect the taste. That's why a thin, tin coating is applied from the inside, because it is non-reactive metal that does not corrode, at least that fast. And this technology, tinning of the metal, used for more than 3000 years, originated from ancient Egypt. And Greeks used it as well. As you may see, it is still unclear who invented the Turkish coffee. So, copper is a great material which humans used for around 11,000 years and mastered to use it. While stainless steel was invented only in August 13, 1913, by Harry Brerley. Even though it's a great metal, it does not have these thermal features that copper has. It has inertia and it will possibly make the brewing process harder. But let's find out. Will coffee in the stainless steel pot taste good or not? I'm gonna use metal pitcher because this is what Jasvel looks like when it's made of stainless steel, usually on the market. Of course, we have Jasvel, which is similar to this shape because it's a test. I'm not going to use it. I'm gonna use what I have. We're gonna use light roast coffee as with the previous video. 20 grams of coffee because it's 350 liters pitcher and I don't want to have small amount of coffee here. This is how much it took to grind the coffee. 200 grams of water. And the power setting will be as usual. 10 minutes and we already have a size of a foam, but it does not cover all the area. Four minutes and the foam is wiggling. There is definitely more foam and let, let's try to mix it. Five minutes. It started to boil or something. It does not behave like a normal coffee. Yeah, it started to rub. So that's a good sign. Seven minutes. And it's probably, yeah, it looks like a normal jazz, but <laughs> extremely large one. It's a sign that I can control it. It started to rub and I will take it all because it looks great. As you can see, there is inertia. So it is pretty controllable, I would say. And look what we got. And this is, by the way, why we use 1 to 10 ratio. Because we need a lot of coffee in order to have enough foam. And in this case, we had enough and it looks nice. 13 minutes and still steaming, but, but should be drinkable already. By the way, crema become darker. Aroma is great. Immediately I like about this coffee. First sip with the crema is interesting. It's pretty acidic, but some fruit notes extremely good. Berries start to appear because of the crema. It's very pleasant crema and it's very chewy. Yeah, very bold and pronounced cup. It's definitely the best cup of coffee I've had with these exact coffees. <laughs> I like it. There is more body, it's, it's more rounded and chewy. And this is what I want from the coffee, to be a little bit chewy. Texture is different. It somewhat uh, reminds me of the French press, but cleaner. The texture is nice, like uh, these oils create this texture, which, which is very pleasant. And yeah, you can totally start with uh, what you have at home, like 
stainless steel pitcher and you've seen how foam should look like and now you can brew it at home and write down in the comments how it was and remember that you can subscribe to the channel it will help me and help you to become better in coffee brewing overall thanks for watching see ya hopefully